Welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhaupt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. Welcome into a new week, Huskers fans. We have a busy show for you tonight. In hour one, we'll hear from Bryce McGowans, who earlier today declared for the NBA draft. And we'll also hear from Nebraska President Ted Carter to wrap up hour one. Then in hour two, Huskers head baseball coach Will Bolt will join us for his first baseball show of the season. In other Huskers news, incoming Huskers volleyball transfer Caitlin Horde was named to the 2022 U.S. Women's Collegiate National Team. The middle blocker will join a team that includes 38 of the country's top collegiate women's volleyball players, including three Olympic medal winners and two coaches with Olympic coaching experience. The national team will hold a training session from June 19th to the 25th. Huskers men's gymnast, uh, gymnast Travis Wong was awarded Big Ten Freshman of the Week for his performance on the pommel horse this past weekend. He scored a 13.45 and finished fit in fifth place for the rotation at Ohio State this past Sunday. This is the third time and third Big Ten honor of Wong's 2022 season. It marks the second straight week. A Huskers freshman has won this award following Chris Heiser winning the same award last week. Nebraska softball announced today that their game against Stanford, scheduled initially for this Tuesday, March 22nd, will now be moved to Wednesday, March 23rd. They'll play at 4 p.m. And Huskers Radio Network pregame coverage will begin at 3.50 p.m. That, of course, again, is pending further weather changes. The women's NCAA tournament round of 32 is in action tonight. Earlier today, NC State took down Kansas State 89 to 57. Notre Dame is up big on Oklahoma at half 54 to 25. Villanova and Michigan are at half, and the score there is 39 to 20, uh, 32 to 29. Michigan and Belmont is just underway against Tennessee. Later tonight, Princeton will battle Indiana at 7 p.m. Also tipping off at 7, Ohio State will take on LSU. At 8 p.m., UCF plays UConn. And at 9, North Carolina squares off with Arizona. And the NFL, the QB carousel continues today as Matt Ryan was traded from the Falcons to the Colts for a third-round pick this afternoon. That's the ticker. My name is Tim Mulhelp, and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. The 0-1 pitch. Shot down the left field line. That's a fair ball. Chick's going to score. Rounding third. Rounding second is Sartori. He's going to be held at third. It's a pinch hit. Double RBI double from Core Jackson. It's a one-run game. And now the Huskers have the tying run and winning run in scoring position. As Spire blasts this one deep down the left field line, it stays fair. A home run for Abby Squire. Her second home run of the game. And Nebraska now leads 8-3 in the sixth. One ball, two strikes. Two on, two out. Huskers down a run. The pitch. Base hit left field. Scoring is Sartori. Here comes Core Jackson around third. He's going to score. And the Huskers have walked off the Islanders on a wild Friday night at Haymarket Park. Can you believe that? First one on the way from Pocop. And Fredwell swings and blasts it. Deep center field and gone! A two-run home run for Ava Bredwell, and that gives the Huskers the lead in the eighth. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are back for another week of Sports Nightly. Glad the rain's coming down. It's coming down pretty good here it at the old boring. stadium. It's boring, according to Andrew. It is. What is it? Uh, what is the Irish term? The buckets. The buckets are dropping. Or I. How do we know? We already forgot this. <laughs> uh, it's not. It's kind of misting here, but we're going to get some rain tonight. <laughs> <laughs> just giving Andrew trouble. That's kind of fun to do around here. Oh, yeah. You know, the only, only thing that would have made it better is if Duke would have lost last night. But Still more rounds to go, though, oh, yeah. to get Duke out of the tournament. <laughs> How's your bracket? My, I still have all four of my Final Four teams left. Well, I was doing all right, and then now uh, Auburn got beat last night. So I had Auburn going yeah. to the Final Four. But I, I have Houston in the Final Four and Gonzaga, so two of the four. It was not a very good day yesterday for the Big Ten on the men's side. It was a tough day. Illinois goes down. Michigan State goes down. Ohio State got beat. Purdue did win, but only two men's teams made the Sweet 16. The women have a chance to do better than that. Yeah, I mean, which I kind of said was important for going into this thing is, you know, with the maybe a little bit of bias is going on with the women's seeding and maybe Nebraska, a lot of people thought they should have been a higher seed and, you know, things that – Things that could help is if your conference goes in and performs well, if you have a lot of teams that advance and go far. So, I, you know, there's been a lot of respect and a lot of people 
say year in and year out that the Big Ten is one of the best conferences. The women still need to get up there in that conversation. And so in order to help with that is to have a lot of teams advance and play well and do well in the tournament. So, you know, if Michigan gets beat, it won't break my heart. But if everybody else advances, that would be good for the, the conference. Maryland is through on the women's side. They played yesterday. They're, they're a second round match tonight. Michigan is leading, as Tim just told you, Ohio State and Indiana will play later tonight. For the men's side, Jessica, this is back-to-back years of really underachieving in the tournament, and a lot of people are kind of speculating why. Were they overrated, overthought of during the season? I kind of feel like a little bit. I thought the league was better a year ago than this year. It, they fell flat on their face last year. You just have Michigan and Purdue left. A lot of people, me included, didn't think Michigan even deserved to be in the tournament. Now here they are in the Sweet 16. And I don't know. I mean, it, to me, it seems like it's a little bit slower pace league, right? So maybe it's a little bit more of a grinded out, very physical. It and is then very you, physical. Then you get to the tournament, and it's more – a lot of teams play faster paced. And so we're seeing a lot of those teams do really well that get up and go that, you know, aren't necessarily a grinded out type of, uh, you know. And so I think if you can get out of – certain teams how they like to play and play in the half court and set up a half court and go inside and, and all of that but if for the teams like to push the pace a little bit have been doing really well in this tournament and there's a lot of those teams outside of the big 10 that play play that kind of style and that's may- just my percep- well, perception perception maybe, maybe the big 10 needs to adapt a little bit because if you year after year kind of fail to make big noise in the tournament maybe you got to look inward and go oh maybe and that's I think that's what a lot of people thought for Nebraska with Fred Hoiberg. They were going to play that free-flowing style, and they have. haven't done it very successfully, obviously. But maybe that would translate better in the tournament. I, I think it would. I really do because, I mean, you're seeing most of these teams. I mean, look at look at Houston, what they yeah. did. I mean, they really pushed the ball. And a lot of these teams that push the pace, if you let them get in their style of play that they like to play, it's hard for those teams that like to slow it up and play physical to keep up with that. So, yeah, I mean, you'd think that maybe that might play into it and why sometimes you're seeing these upsets for these teams that if they can play their style of play and get the Big Ten teams out of their rhythm that they like to play, you know, sometimes that bodes well for those teams. I know when Coach Hoiberg was hired that that was my thought. This is a style that's going to be well, do well in March. Now, obviously, it's been messy in November, December, January, and February, which hasn't allowed them to play in March. But I still have hope and We talked last week about that there was going to be some dominoes to fall for this team, and they have. We talked, first of all, about Matt Abdelmasi separating from the program, Doc Sadler opting not to come back as as an – as a whatever is an analyst or analyst or assistant to the head coach, whatever title they had for Doc – and now today, the Bryce McGowan's news. Yeah, which not surprising, kind of felt like that was coming. And, you know, a few years ago, this might have been a decision that maybe you question, but the NBA has done a lot better job about developing young talent and uh, raw talent. And, and Bryce showed some flashes of being a really legit talent for the NBA. He does have, he does need to grow. There's no doubt about it. And I think Bryce would be the the first to admit it, but with the G league, with what they've been doing, you know, before you get to those, those uh, NBA teams, they've done a lot better job of, of developing players and talent uh, here recently. So, it, you know, it, he probably is not going to go right away and be a superstar, probably not where he's at right now with his game, but he's going to be selected by a team that's going to, you know, invest some time in him to bring him on because there is that potential there and he can be brought along and a lot of times the best way to do that hey you know no class all you're doing is playing basketball and you're going up against talent that you're going to be facing in the NBA day in and day out not just not just when you play games but even in practice you know facing those that type of talent um, you can really bring a player along and bring them a lot along even quicker than maybe them staying back a year in college so not surprised by any means and we kind of felt like he could be a one and dunner from the very start and then once he really started coming on there in Big Ten play I think it was pretty evident that that was the direction that he was going to go yeah I thought the last month he showed yeah this is an NBA guy yeah and he's so young I think I think he's 19 right well, yeah I mean, and he still needs to get bigger and stronger and we've seen how quickly how much he's even done that just in a little time that he really started focusing on that here 
here. So yeah, he'll he'll dedicate himself to this and, and there won't be as much going on outside of that. And so, you know, he's he's gonna be a guy that's gonna work at it. There's no doubt about it. He's gonna he's gonna work his tail off and he's gonna get in the gym and and so he's gonna progress along probably pretty quickly. But yeah, definitely a, a not not a shock by any means when you started seeing how he was coming along there in Big Ten play. Buckle up, put the phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We're going to hear from Bryce here in just a little bit. Jessica had a chance to catch up with him. We'll hear about his thoughts about going to the NBA. You and I were, before the show, we were going through some mock drafts, and the draft isn't until June, so it's still like several months away. But I found on nbadraft.net, He's going 22nd to Indiana, which would be interesting because that's where Fred Hoiberg played most of his career, was with the Pacers. So I'm sure they'll be ringing Coach Hoiberg's phone to get a, a, a scouting report on Bryce. But there's other boards that don't have him at all in the first round. They have him early second round. But I still think for him, basketball's where he's going to make his money. I think it's probably the right move. Well, and to a lot of these drafts that I was looking at was not updated. So I don't know. I mean, maybe people were thinking, waiting till he declared. Who knows? But he's going to have workouts. And so he has a chance. He'll probably go to the um, combine, right? And so mm-hmm. you have a chance to continue to, to up that draft stock a little bit through all this process. We see it all the time with NFL guys. So he's going to have a chance. But I still don't necessarily think he's probably going to move up into the lottery picks. I, I think probably right around that 20-ish maybe area um, will b- probably be where he lands. But still, you know, you're, you're talking about a really um, – a, a potential to set yourself up for life. Sure. And then also, again, you're, you're going to go all in on basketball with a team that's really invested in you that's going to help bring you along in that area. Was Delano Banton even on draft projections at all? Second round guy. Okay. Which is From the of, start he was? No, he really kind of showed up more after that – the, the those combine, workouts right? yeah, in yeah. Chicago that those those guys go to in May. And for people who are wondering, can Bryce come back? No, he is signed with an agent. So he once you do that, you forego your chance to come back. He and he's made that pretty clear. Once he was all in, and yeah. I think you need to be if you're at his age and, and getting the feedback that you're getting. He needs to be all in, and he needs to just focus on becoming a professional basketball player. Yeah, and I think for the most part, when you're seeing guys potentially just go see what their options are and then come back, they say that. You know, I'm just, I'm going to leave my options open because you do, it's when you sign with an agent, you're done. That's where you kind of lock into that. So usually you see those guys when they come out with those decisions that, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to explore, I'm going to declare for the draft, I'm going to explore my options, but I'm leaving my options open to be able to come back to college and finish out my eligibility or, or utilize my year of eligibility. So usually you see that announcement come along with that, and that was not the case with Bryce. Yeah, so I know I've had some people texting me today. Can he still come back? No, he, he's he gone past the point of no return for college basketball, and, and I'm glad that we got a chance to watch him play for a year. It was really yeah. special. The games, some of the efforts he put out were really special. And here's the thing, too, regardless of, you know, I know this, this season was a disappointment as far as what he came here to do, but this will help in recruiting. If anytime you have a guy that goes that high in the draft, and now you have back to back guys, you got Delano Banton and uh, Bryce McGowan's, mm-hmm. you know, that, that bodes well for a team for recruiting. Hey, you can come here and get yourself set to go to the next level. You can come here and, and, you know, get drafted in the NBA. So, you know, in my time at Oklahoma, I know that they used that big time and it was, it was very beneficial in recruiting to have guys like Trey Young go do what he did. And, and they use that for recruiting. Even guys at Porter Moser who didn't even coach Trey Young is using that for recruiting. So you're talking about anytime you have a player that, comes from your program that goes to the next level where most of these guys that's their dream right they want to go play in the nba this is going to help for recruiting from here on out seeing what bryce can do at the next level and we wish him nothing but the best no decision for brother trey i think that's still to come probably before the end of the month still waiting on Derek walker still waiting on lat man there's other things that happen and nebraska's already gotten active in the transfer portal we can't talk about that yeah. until that's made official from the school, but we we knew that was probably going to happen with this uh, program and as well. And as we've talked about, there's some good pieces coming back. Wilhelm Breidenbach, C.J. Wilcher's a great piece. So you got got some good pieces coming back. If you can hit the transfer portal and 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 knock it out of the park there, you know, hopefully they can rebuild in that way. But yeah, there's still a lot of news left to come for for men's basketball. We'll be following for the several weeks and months now. 
Our Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time, shop finance, and buy online at woodhouse.com. If you want to be a part of the program, phone lines are always open and available for you. 402-413-2400. Talked about the NCAA tournament. The women's second round is wrapping up tonight. The biggest upset in that tournament happened with two teams locally, and that was Creighton going to Iowa City and beating the second-seeded Iowa Hawkeyes yesterday. That was that was a jaw-dropper there. I was surprised. I really thought Iowa was kind of built to make a pretty good run in March, but give Creighton credit. They go and pull off a nice upset on the road. Yeah, I was asking you, who would you rather see win, uh, yeah. Iowa or Creighton? <laughs> Can they both lose? No. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think, again, Maybe the seeding a little bit. Maybe did Iowa deserve that high of a seed? I don't know. I mean, um, but Creighton came in, and boy, they were not intimidated by any means, and they showed up, and I never am disappointed to see those types of upsets, even if it does right my bracket. We have not had a show since Friday, and that's when the season came to end for Amy Williams' squad, and I know they were really disappointed. It's always disappointing when the season comes to an end, but I think they maybe the biggest reason they were disappointed, they didn't feel like they played very well against Gonzaga. No, I mean, I did the post-game interviews because at the NCAA, it's a little bit difficult, and you have the cooling off period, so I did the interview for Coatney, and um, when I talked to Amy, she was like, she said, we're disappointed. We're disappointed that we didn't put our best effort out there. We're disappointed because we came here expecting to win this game in advance and disappointed that it's over. I mean, she did not sugarcoat it, that they did not feel like they played their best basketball game. And, you know, maybe a little rusty, maybe a little bit out of shape being that they it had been 14 days since they had played in the Big Ten tournament. So as much as it's good to get a little bit of a breather, maybe too long of a break, um, but also to me and – and I, I could have been completely wrong here, but that was my first time really watching Nebraska. Well, I guess it's been since 2018. But to me, it looked like a team that had been had not been in the tournament against a team that had because Gonzaga had experience and they had a lot of super seniors I mean you were listening to the lineups and it was like senior senior right. senior freshman freshman sophomore sophomore you know coming out for Nebraska so to me it looked like I was watching a team that had been here before and a team that hadn't so you know I think and, and that's another thing that coach Williams talked about is that they will use this a lot of these you think about Alexis Markowski Allison Widener these players walked off their high school's uh, court with their high school career winning state titles and so this will fuel them because this they haven't felt like this before and so they'll be fueled by this they'll they'll learn from it they'll get better from it and they'll know what it takes to advance next time around and you know it'll be, their off season will be interesting too we mentioned last week that bella cravens sam hybe have to make decisions because they they could end their college careers they've played four years they do get the extra year for covid what are their decisions that's going to be a personal decision for both of them and they'll probably be somebody that leaves the team. It just happens. You have attrition. And I also don't want Amy and the staff to just kind of not look around. There's probably going to be some really good players that can help Nebraska be better than they are in the portal. Yeah, I mean, we've said it time and time again with all sports, with all the extra eligibility, there is definitely going to be some some players enter the portal from all across the country, some grad transfers, whatever it might be that – you could probably get a gem in the portal. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Jazz Shelley, but even just a gra graduate transfer that could help you immediately as far as shooting goes. You know, I think that is one area they definitely feel like they probably need a piece there or need to see improvement. It's been mentioned before several times that, you know, Allison Widener is a player that definitely needs to attack her outside shot from, you know, in the post in the off season, uh, Kendall Moriarty, a lot of these players do. So, uh, but yeah, definitely an area that I think they need to get um, some, some help on the outside for sure. All right. Here's what we have coming up on the program. Again, Bryce McGowan's Jessica caught up with him uh, recently. We'll hear that conversation about his decision to leave Nebraska and give it a go on the national basketball association. University president Ted Carter is going to be here. It is University, it's I Love UN, University of Nebraska Week. We're going to hear about that from the president coming up here in a few minutes. And hour number two, it's our first baseball show of the spring. The head coach, Will Bolt, will be here, obviously disappointed with yesterday's outcome where the Oscars were embarrassed in their home field by Texas A&M Corpus Christi. We'll hear from the head coach. He'll be here for the entire hour to so get your comments, questions ready for Coach Bolt. Again, our numbers 402-413-2400. Back with more of the show coming up. The game isn't just about winning or losing. It's about the snacks they share after they've used up all their energy in the field. It's the early morning practice before school and staying late after to get a couple more kicks in. 
It's the pride they feel for their team and the determination to always keep improving. Sure, the game isn't always about winning or losing, but when they've won the big game and celebration is in full swing, there's only one thing left for you to do. Get them home safe. Buckle up in back. Paid for by NDOT Highway Safety Office. Okay, let's get a photo of the bride and groom standing next to that giant mud puddle. Good. Now smile. Oh, honey, don't look now, but you're covered in mud. Oh, so is your white tux. You know what this means, don't you? Trucks and Bucks from the Nebraska Lottery is back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the happiest day of my life. Don't you think we should head to the nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer? I do. Trucks and Bucks is back, and you could win one of eight new trucks. Top prize odds one in 336,000. At Subaru, they love building vehicles for those who pack a lot into life. The redesigned 2021 Crosstrek is their way of saying more power to you. An upgrade in horsepower means you have a world of fun and adventure waiting for you. And the Crosstrek comes with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. Love, it's what makes Subaru, Subaru. Visit Deto Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or at DetoSubaru.com. Upgraded horsepower available on select models. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in-venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. This isn't the start. Before I got here, I started training. And before that, I did something to my back. But my first move was Athletico Physical Therapy. That's where I'd eventually end up. So why not start there? I mean, my therapist immediately found the source of my pain. These are the same physical therapists who work with elite marathon runners. So soon, I was back to running, but without pain. <sighs> you got this. It all starts at Athletico. Schedule your free assessment at athletico.com. Did you know that cigarette butts make up a large portion of microplastics in the ocean, which end up in 70% of seabirds and 30% of sea turtles? Bank of the West is helping to solve this problem by not financing big tobacco, proving that what a bank chooses not to finance can be just as important as what it does. Learn more about what we do and don't finance at bankofthewest.com slash change. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment, and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Cornerstone Bank proudly serves Nebraska with a full line of loan and deposit products. Cornerstone is large enough to handle all of your financial needs while offering the personal service you deserve and the local decision-making you expect from a family-owned community bank. Stop in or call one of the Cornerstone Bank locations near you to discover the Cornerstone difference. Bank on a solid foundation. Cornerstone Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Loan subject to approval. 
Back on our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. It's the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. President Carter coming up here in a few minutes. And Will Bolt's first baseball show of the spring at the top of the hour. But we told you in the opening segment, the news of the day was Bryce McGowan's making it official that he is foregoing the rest of his collegiate eligibility to give it a go on pro basketball. Yep, and I had a chance to talk with him about that decision and um, all of what, how his game might translate, what he needs to do to be ready for that, all of that good stuff. So um, we'll let you uh, take a listen to that right now. When did you first uh, have the dream of maybe potentially one day playing in the NBA? Uh, seventh grade. Uh, that's when, you know, everything really started clicking. Um, you know, we're going to big tournaments. Um, you know, me and my teammates, were, we were playing well. And um, through high school, I would say freshman year of high school, that's when everything kind of blew up. Um, a lot of, you know, recruiting services, uh, college coaches, they were uh, in the gyms at all times, you know, and it kind of felt good. Um, it definitely felt good. You know, seeing that, and it just made me want to go harder. Why is uh, why is the NBA such a, a dream for you? Well, growing you know growing up, um, how my you know my goal was to you know make it to the NBA. Um, you know, take care of my family, uh, take care of myself, and you know it's the game I love. So um, you know, just being able to you know step on the court every day and you know strive for something, uh, reach for something greater than basketball and greater than, you know, myself, uh, that it keeps me going every day. Why do you feel like um, your game will translate? Uh, really, uh, just, you know, versatility, uh, bringing, you know, different things to the game, uh, you know, athleticism, length, um, scoring ability, um, uh, you know, just being able to bring uh, a, different, a different type of, I would say, a swagger, as, but, um, yeah, I feel like um, that's, that's it's, I'm here for it. I feel like, you know, because at the beginning you were shooting on the outside, which obviously you can knock down shots from, from deep, but it's kind of changed where you've, you've kind of let it go inside out, right? Has that, was that a process for you learning to do that in, in college? Yeah, I feel like, you know, at the beginning of the season, I kind of settled because, um, you know, high school, you could, you feel me, it was, it was close to three-point line, uh, you know, and it was, I would say it was like, it was kind of easier in high school, uh, you know, not a lot of, not as many athletic and uh, heavy contests as usual, but, you know, just getting downhill, being able to uh, fill the game out uh, and get myself going from the inside out. What does it feel like knowing that, you know, you've had this dream for so long and it is getting closer and closer to becoming a reality? Uh, it's amazing. Um, I think, I kind of, I think about it like all the time. Like, you know, all the hard work um, that I've put in, uh, all the, you know, all the tough battles, all the hard times, um, all the tough fights, uh, it, it's, 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 fin it's about to pay off. So, um, you know, I just continue to thank God for the blessings he's uh, gave upon me, well, put, up, put upon me. So, you know, I'm just playing in his name. Have you said about what it's going to be like when your name is called in, in the NBA draft? Nah, not really. I'm just, you know, trying to get ready for the next level, but um, I'm definitely looking forward to it. What do you think it's going to take? I mean, the progression that you've made already, but then to continue to make that next step so that you can not just, you know, get to the NBA, but make an impact in the NBA. All right, just continue to um, get stronger, put on weight, um, continue to, you know, uh, tighten up my game in all areas, um, continue to expand my game. Um, from on both sides, continue to be a leader, um, you know, get more vocal, but, um, you know, just, just uh, being able to tighten up on everything this summer. Um, what do teams need to know about Bryce McGowan's other than what they see on the basketball court, but what do they need to know about you to, to know that you would be a good piece to the puzzle of their franchise? Uh, you know, he's a, a leader. Um, he's going to come in every day. He's going to compete. Um, he's going to have fun, uh, and, you know, he wants to win, so. 
you know, you, you're such a superstar and you've become such a big name and that's been, you know, since you've been in high school, but you seem so humble and you're so kind to people. Why are you that way? Uh, I would say, um, you know, that's what my, my family's, my whole family, you know, we're big on that. Um, you know, treat people how you want to be treated. So, um, you know, we always treat people with respect, uh, kindness, and, you know, we always show love um, to our elders and to the little ones that look up to us. How important is that as a, you know, somebody that has such a huge platform? Right. Uh, really just being able to, you know, show that anybody, it's, it, it's not, it takes nothing to be nice, um, you know. Uh, you know, in, a, this, in this, this world today, you know, we see a lot of hatred, um, but, you know, we just can try and, you know, encourage, you know, the younger generation to um, be nice, uh, be kind, and, you know, show a lot of love. That's also the thing that I hope people will remember about him, too, is that he is a kind human being that treats people so well, despite being a you know superstar in waiting. He treats people kindly. And so th that's one of the biggest things I'll remember about him is but despite the all the wow draw dropping plays that he made to me is how nice of a human being he is. And he's out. He's been out. And you oh, yeah. see him all over the place around Lincoln other sporting events he supports other student athletes on campus one of the most visible people on in the department he really is he was all over the state you know championships the high school state championships he was, he was there and um he he was at almost every single women's game him and trey you know were there and and Derek walker were all there and and people would want to take photos with him and he'd always he always obliged whatever you know people came up to him wherever they might be wanted an autograph wanted a picture he always said yes and never got annoyed was always very kind to people so um it's a good dude and i think he will remain grounded in that way just because knowing you know getting to know a little bit about his family and his parents they he will he will stay grounded i think he enjoyed his time here i really do i do too i, I think, think he's look. very appreciative of yeah. the, not just the time that he got to put his brother but you know the how he was accepted and appreciated here despite you know the team not maybe performing as well as they would have hoped uh coming into it that's good good to hear from him there hey our sports Alley hotline is brought to you by the woodhouse auto family shop woodhouse first 18 brand 16 convenient location simplified car buying to save you time shop finance buy online at woodhouse.com we're back to talk to the president of the university of nebraska ted carter that is next experience the difference at woodhouse buick gmc Discover the all-new 2022 GMC Terrain. With three distinct trim lines to choose from, there's a terrain for any driver. Plus, safety and capability come standard in the terrain lineup so you can conquer the road with confidence. Shop our indoor showroom or purchase online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. Woodhouse Buick GMC. We are professional grade. It's the final days of Ford Truck Month. Your last chance to save big on the only trucks built Ford Tough. Work or play, get after it in a new Ford F-150 or Super Duty truck. Get a Ford Maverick or get after any adventure in a Ford Ranger pickup. Take advantage of our best offers on the full Ford lineup of trucks. But get moving. Offers are ending soon. Get to the final days of Ford Truck Month. Maverick has limited availability. See dealer for inventory stock. Momentum. It's building at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with game-changing work in precision agriculture, nanoscience, and digital humanities. We're unlocking mysteries in brain research, solving the impossible with remote surgery using robots, and we're creating bold futures with world-leading research in early childhood education. We don't slow down, and we're not letting up. We are Nebraska. First pitch to Griffin. He hits one hard to right center field. Long run for Brendan Ryan, the center fielder, racing back there, and it is gone. Home run. Griffin Everett hits it into the party porch in right center. This Wednesday, Huskers baseball will square off against the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. First pitch is set for 6.35 p.m. with Huskers radio network pregame coverage beginning at 6 p.m. Tune in to your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the field, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. 
That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with DeKalb. Always read and follow green marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. First pitch to Griffin. He hits one hard to right center field. Long run for Brendan Ryan. The center fielder racing back there, and it is gone. Home run. Griffin Everett hits it into the party porch in right center. This Wednesday, Huskers baseball will square off against the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. First pitch is set for 6.35 p.m. with Huskers Radio Network pregame coverage beginning at 6 p.m. Tune in to your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Make it custom, make it yours. Right now at Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Blair, you can get up to $2,500 off MSRP when you place a custom 2022 Ram 2500 or 3500 order during Ram Truck Month. Get $1,000 off MSRP when you custom order. Plus, with a qualifying trade-in, get an additional $1,000 off. Business owners get an additional $500 off. Shop Ram Truck Month online at WoodhouseChryslerJeepDodge.com. When you're a sports fan, it's kind of like having a new love interest. You want to know all about them. Only, instead of learning about someone's third grade crush, you want to know the latest scores, stats, and lineups. To get that, you need Cox Internet. Cox gives you that window to look deeply into your beloved team's soul. Not to mention their injury list. Cox. We're sports 24-7. Learn more at cox.com sports. Everyone knows that Dakota Mac is known for their great rates on long-term fixed ag real estate loans. But just how long-term are they? Well, they're even longer term than your sister's piano recital at church that time you drank a whole big cup of soda right before you left home and insisted to your mom that you didn't have to use the bathroom. We're talking that long term. Hello, it's Jim Persinger from Dakota Mac. Give me a call at 308-284-3260 to learn all about our competitive rates on 30-year fixed rate loans. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. Nebraska's new collaborative biosecurity lab is leading research to safeguard America's food supply against growing threats in partnership with the U.S. Departments of Defense and Homeland Security. The lab brings together world-leading expertise in agriculture and a deep understanding of the complexities of strategic deterrence across the threat spectrum and in multiple domains. Welcome back. Sports Island here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming up at the top of the hour, it's our first Will Bull Baseball Show of the year. Looking forward to talking to the head coach. But right now, we are delighted to welcome on board the president of the University of Nebraska, Ted Carter. It's been since the Iowa game since we talked. Now spring breaks even gone past us. Time has just flown by, hasn't it? It has, and it's really exciting to have baseball season underway. And uh, you know, let's cheer for Go Big Red uh, as, as they're getting ready to you know start their Big Ten play. I mean, this is uh, this is the team I hope of destiny. Even though they had a little rough start, uh, you know, pre preseason pick to be Big Ten champions again. But uh, let's let's keep our faith with our baseball team. Coach Bolt is uh, he's the real deal. He's a top-notch guy. They start the defense of their Big Ten title on Friday with Michigan coming to town. This is a special week at the university. Let's talk a little bit about that. So, Greg, today is the first day of I Love NU Week, which is, uh, our fans know, a week-long celebration of each of our four campuses. Uh, This year's celebration is going to be in person, so I Love NU Day event is Wednesday at the Nebraska State Capitol in Lincoln. I invite everybody to come down. It starts at 1 p.m., I'll be kicking off the program with remarks. Senator John Stinner from Scotts Bluff, Senator Jen Day from Gretna, they're all going to be joining us. And listeners are welcome to join as well. Now, I'll also point out that if you can't be there in person, we're going to have a a very strong presence on social media all week long. And if listeners want to share a story of how the university has impacted them on social media, just use the hashtag 
I love NU. Well, that sounds exciting. This is certainly, a, uh, there is a lot to celebrate with the university. Speaking of, of events, you had a press conference this past week talking about educational attainment. Tell us more about this effort. So uh, on Wednesday, I joined Senator Lynn Waltz, as well as mem- members of the, the unicameral uh, and the education committee and other education leaders from across the state, the college system, community colleges, Nebraska Department of Education to announce a goal of 70 percent of our 25 to 34 30- 34-year-old Nebraskans to have a higher education credential by the year 2030. So that's only in eight years. And that would be not only a stated goal that we've never had before, but up from today's statistics, which is about 58% of our uh, 25 to 34-year-olds have a post-secondary degree. So this is a big change. Uh, It's exciting that we all came together around a unified vision for growing educational attainment in our state. This would put us in the top 10 of all states in the nation if we can achieve this uh, in terms of education credentials. But really, most importantly for uh, our fans here in Nebraska, this is about creating the workforce and the talent for the work needed for the future. More and more jobs are going to require some sort of post-secondary either degree or certificate or even the four-year undergraduate degree. So we know that we're going to need this for the workforce of the future. Again, we're visiting with President Carter, University of Nebraska president here on Sports Nightly. The university system has engaged in a number of initiatives recently that support greater access to students. Let us in on some of this. Well, you can't reach any of these attainment goals if you can't be attractive and have accessibility for more students to come in to us through the front door. That's true for whether we're talking community college, state college. But here at the University of Nebraska, uh, we have expanded a really successful program called Nebraska Promise, which, as you may remember, is our free tuition program for Nebraskan families earning $65,000 or less. We're also moving the free... um, application for federal student aid or FAFSA, that priority deadline from April 1st to June 1st to give our students and their families some more time to make some big decisions. So what this means is qualified Nebraska students with family incomes of $65,000 or less will be able to attend the University of Nebraska tuition free. So in 2020, when we opened this program up, we guaranteed full tuition coverage for full-time students that had family incomes of $60,000 or less. So we've expanded this now to $65,000. The higher income threshold mirrors the state's current median uh, household income and will cover uh, about 200 additional students under the expanded Nebraska Promise. So right now we have about 7,000 students across all of our campuses, UNL, UNO, UNK, and UNMC that are attending college tuition free this year under the Nebraska Promise. This program will apply to all of those students who are already qualified, both on campus, online, returning, transfer, and new students alike. So what, is, what do students have to do to get into this program? Well, first, they have to be admitted into one of our campuses and complete, as I said, the FAFSA application, uh, that new priority deadline of June 1st. Uh, they don't need a separate application beyond the FAFSA to qualify for Nebraska Promise, and all university campuses are moving the priority deadline to one June. So we've extended the deadline in past years and decided to permanently move the deadline to June 1st. This gives students and families more time to complete the forms, and that FAFSA application is something that you really have, it takes some time to fill out, so they'll be able to qualify for financial aid. So I'm really excited about this. This is a big deal. Absolutely. This is a fantastic deal for everybody, and I hope a lot of people will take advantage of this. And I know this has been a really big point of view during your presidency here in Nebraska, but it's not the only thing that the university is doing to expand access to Nebraska's young people, is it? No, you know, and even though uh, we feel like we're coming out of the global pandemic with still some challenges, there's still some uncertainty. Every dollar matters to all our students and families. We care about student debt greatly here. Access to higher education is more important now than ever. And our message to the people of our state is no matter their circumstance, a University of Nebraska education is within their reach. Now, Nebraska Promise is just one of the number of steps being taken across the University of Nebraska system to expand access and affordability. I wanted to mention that tuition rates at NU campuses are still frozen this year. We're gonna be in the second year of that frozen tuition and will remain that same rate in 2022-2023 academic year. So each of our four NU campuses are among the best values already in their peer groups and the chancellors and I are continuing to explore strategies 
to expand access even further. Wonderful, wonderful messaging being put out by the university for access to get some young people into the system and get their life and, and headed in the right direction. Great to see you. Uh, a lot. I know a lot's happening. Your plate's been really full. Well, for sports fans, uh, there's nothing but uh, optimism on the horizon. Uh, we're in baseball season. Wrestling's doing well. We've got women in spring the NCAA uh, tournament. And spring football is just a couple weeks away. Uh, and then, boom, we're going to be in the fall, and it's going to be a whole new academic year. Lots of excitement on the horizon. Sure, good to see you. Good to see you, Greg. President Ted Carter with us here on Sports Sunday. We're back to wrap up the hour next. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. In a world where fun and cash prizes collide, one game explodes to the forefront. Cash Blast from the Nebraska Lottery. Non-stop excitement, a winning thrill ride and starring you. Until April 12th, play 2x2 weekly for a chance to win $5,000 or $500. And if your ticket was a seven-day draw, your prize is double. Don't miss it. Cash Blast playing at a lottery retailer near you. 2x2 top prize odds, 1 in 105,000. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. There is no place like Nebraska, and there's no place that treats you like home, like Sap Brothers. For 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and been a reliable partner to local farms and Husker fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into their travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Experience the difference at Woodhouse Buick GMC. You never know what lies ahead. So trust the powerful and innovative features of the 2022 GMC Sierra 1500. Its powerful engines and bold presence give you superior capability to handle what life throws your way. Advanced technology and safety features come standard to help you keep in command while on the road. Purchase in-store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. We're back here in our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. It's the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Great to hear from President Ted Carter. I had not talked to him since Thanksgiving week for the Iowa game. It, that wow. seems like forever ago in some ways. In some ways, it doesn't seem like it's very long ago. It really does. I feel like it feels like forever since football. And we're talking spring game now. Now that I'm done with basketball and we're talking football, we're going to have, you know, some battles for the spring game. Pro day tomorrow. Pro day, yes. So um, now that we're all back in, it's, it does feel like it's been a while since we've talked football. We're seeing some of the old fellows walk around here today. Yes, the Maury Toure walked through the studio today. They were doing some interviews right over here off the studio. Uh, all the guys went through, I guess, met with some some of the teams. So um, it's going to be fun to see those guys back tomorrow. We're going to have coverage of that pro day tomorrow night here on the program. Also, Husker practice resumes tomorrow. Bill Bush going to talk to the media, see what's happening with those special teams. I bet that will be an absolute boring media availability. He and Mickey Joseph <laughs> are talking tomorrow. Oh, that'll be wild. My goodness. That'll be, uh, man, 
star-studded uh, all of the the gems of interviews right there bang bang those two back to back we'll have coverage of all that tomorrow night here on the program full two-hour show for you tomorrow night also want to tell you in a programming note trev albert's monthly radio show is thursday hour number one so get that on your make your appointment make that appointment listening to hear the athletic director on thursday night time to tell you to buckle up put the phone down a reminder from the ndot highway safety office want to give a shout out to Mark Manning and the Husker wrestling team, Jessica. Yes. March Madness in Detroit. They finished fifth as a team. They had five All-Americans, and Ridge Lovett got all the way to the championship. Round. How special was that to watch him? We, You and I picked a couple of guys that we thought might could have a shot at a national title. He was one of those guys just because of his mentality. You know, he just... Um, Man, he's got a bright future. Just a sophomore. Um, I know he's been around and been in the program, but still has lots of, or well, what, two, three years of eligibility left. So he's going to come back bigger and stronger and better for it. And he's going to make some noise uh, moving forward in the future. But yeah, to see Christian Lance make All-American, how, how cool was that video? Just gives you chills. He's a guy that went Division Two yep. and then comes here and... and I got a chance to interview him earlier on in the season, and, and he's just so appreciative of how much he's grown since he's been here. And so for him to be an All-American, it is so hard to win a national title in wrestling. I mean, everything has got to go right. And so for them to, you know, those that many, that number of guys, and to fight back through and still get All-American after they were knocked out through the wrestlebacks, I mean, just um, really special to see them come through that way. Peyton Robb finished fourth, so you had a second-place finisher and a fourth-place finisher for the Huskers, and as a team, they finished fifth. So think about this. At the Big Tens, which were here in Lincoln a couple weeks ago, Nebraska finished seventh. Then they finished fifth at the NCAAs. Wow, yeah, I How mean, kind of had a feeling that there was some bigger picture maybe in mind for a few of those Big Ten teams and uh, for Nebraska to – put together uh, what they did and, and Peyton Rom will be back, you know, yes. and, and he's a guy that ha just went back up to 157 after wrestling or wait, 157, right? Yep. Um, he was at 149 a year ago. And so just getting settling in and we've heard coach Manning really rave about his potential. So you got some young guys. I know there were a lot of guys that came back super seniors, but you also have some young guys that really made some noise that gained a lot of valuable experience that are going to be good for the program moving forward in the future so congratulations to coach manning that entire team what a season they had to finish fifth in the country is really something else in the five all americans is really it cool. was funny because at the same time ridge was wrestling to get to the finals illinois was about to get beat and i was watching on my phone and people were like you know there's a good basketball game going on i'm like i got a good wrestling match going on so it was exciting to see ridge and he's I, just got a be the best personality he's so fun that brings up a good point why is that tournament the same time as the NCAA. Move that up a week, right? I think they should move the NCAA wrestling up a week so that it's not that first weekend of the NCAA basketball. Yeah. They would get more attention. You get more attendance, more people watching. You wouldn't be battling because then you're also battling with the women's right. basketball tournament ESPN's, TV. ESPN's, yeah. So not a lot that. of people have ESPNU. So yeah, I mean, that's what it was on. Yeah, I think it would definitely benefit the sport if it wasn't competing against the first round of, of March Madness for sure. Penn State won the, the national championship for the team. They, they were fantastic they had five wrestlers in the finals and they won all five classes amazing year for penn state i was talking to some people upstairs today the big 10 is probably the most dominant in wrestling and volleyball no probably doubt the two sports are the most absolutely dominant. i don't even think it's up for debate volleyball is off the beach finally <laughs> they're done with the beach i mean i still am pretty salty i didn't all get right. the invite to go to hawaii john cook come on <laughs> take care of us a little bit better than that they go back indoors now for the next couple weeks they'll play kansas remember out there sold out in grand island on the 23rd of april hey our sports honey hotline brought to you by the woodhouse auto family shop woodhouse first 18 brands 16 convenient locations simplified carbine to save you time shop finance buy online at woodhouse.com our first baseball show of the spring coming up next hour will bolt will be here we'll talk about the huskers on the diamonds coming off of a five and two week at home at haymarket park so get your comments questions ready for the head coach she's next Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. The bolder, the better. The 2022 Hyundai Sonata is reimagined with tech and safety features you want. With inspiring innovation and a bold new exterior, this is a sedan designed to be seen. 
Confidence comes standard when you shop Hyundai. You'll benefit from Hyundai Owner Assurance with America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Visit Woodhouse Hyundai off 144th and Giles Road or online at woodhousehyundai.com during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Okay, let's get a photo of the bride and groom standing next to that giant mud puddle. Good. Now smile. Oh, honey, don't look now, but you're covered in mud. Oh, so is your white tux. You know what this means, don't you? Trucks and bucks from the Nebraska Lottery is back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the happiest day of my life. Don't you think we should head to the nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer? I do. Trucks and bucks is back, and you could win one of eight new trucks. Top prize odds one in 336,000. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. Nebraska researchers are designing the next generation of roadside steel barriers through an industry partnership with Traffic's devices. This partnership has produced the Delta Crash Cushion, a simplistic, effective way to keep drivers safe on highways. This barrier is vital for roadside safety and significantly improves the chances motorists will be able to walk away from roadside collisions. Keep yourself and your loved ones healthy by getting your free COVID-19 vaccine. Plus, when you get a COVID-19 vaccine at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy between February 1st and April 30th, you can get a 50-cent Hy-Vee Fuel Saver reward. Talk about savings. Schedule your COVID-19 vaccination appointment today at hyvee.com slash COVID vaccine. Some restrictions apply. See pharmacy for more details.
Live from the Huskers Radio Network, this is the Husker Baseball Show with head coach Will Bolt. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Griffin drills one to right center field. Long run for the outfitters, and nobody's going to get there. It's going to score Anderson, and the Huskers are going to walk the Mavericks off here today. Nebraska wins it 6-5 to five to claim their home opener. What a day for Griffin Everett. He gets four hits, including the game winner with a double to the right center field gap. And the pitch. Fastball hits in the right field. Face hit. Huskers win the game. Efri Cervantes just served it in the right field. Matthews scores. Huskers have rallied to win it 6-5. Two on, two outs. Huskers down a run. The pitch. Face hit left field. Scoring is Sartori. Here comes Core Jackson around third. He's going to score. And the Huskers have walked off the Islanders on a wild Friday night at Haymarket Park. Can you believe that? Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Thanks and welcome to our first baseball show over the spring. The head coach with us until the top of the hour. If you want to be a part of it, phone lines are always open for you at 402-413-2400. That also doubles up as our text line. So if you want to fire off a text, we can certainly relay that on to the head coach. Huskers coming off of a disappointing weekend, a series loss to Corpus Christi. We'll get ready to play South Dakota State on Wednesday, weather providing. We've got some weather coming through the area and then here comes big 10 play already crazy that we're already up to big 10 conference games coming up with michigan your thoughts about the first 19 games kind of uneven yeah yeah that's that would be a way to describe it inconsistent um you know we dug ourselves a hole with a record obviously the first weekend you know going one and three and um certainly hoped it to be better than that the first weekend and ran into a really good opponent the next weekend with tcu and and had, gave him a run on that sunday would have liked to have seen how that you know could have possibly turned out a little bit different and maybe our fortunes change a little bit after that but you know, and then we rebounded and, and played better. Um, and, you know, the last 10 games, six and four, so certainly nothing to, you know, have a, a trophy for, but, you know, playing a little bit better at times. Uh, but again, I mean, we're, we're still trying to find ourselves as a team. And we've seen a lot of different combinations of, of lineups and, and um, you know, just different roles with certain guys and, and those type of things. And so now, now that we're here uh, with conference play coming up this week, we've, we've kind of seen, you know, who's got gotten it done with the lights on you know who's going to be able to handle it defensively who's going to be able to handle it in terms of just you know being able to move the offense and 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 uh, the guys that we can count on on the mound you were replacing so much from last year's team you had kind of those super seniors that opted to come back for one more year and you didn't have to tinker with the lineup very much right. you didn't have to really use a lot of different arms because you had your set guys and you were only playing on the weekends now you're kind of back to normal baseball with a lot and dealing with the things most coaches have to deal with every year. Yeah. Yeah, last year was unique. Um, we Once we solidified that top five in the order, I mean, that's pretty much what we rolled with day in and day out and didn't didn't really need to change it and just played matchups at the back half of the lineup. You have the entire starting rotation this, the you know the same way the entire year that that never happens you know so um, part of it yeah, like you said was just not playing the midweek games we always were able to hit the reset button every weekend um, you know those type of things good and bad there we weren't able to develop maybe some guys last year because of the no no midweeks but um, yeah totally different team and we knew that coming into it um, certainly feel like we're better than we've played up to this point and, and hope to show that as we start conference play and. And, and start to get some more consistency with the lineups and you know now that we've seen you know some things that we needed to see in preseason when it's different isn't it for guys who last year maybe just hung on the railing most of the games and now they're having to play day in and day out get themselves ready to play day in and day out mentally and physically that's a big jump for and i'm thinking about guys like anglem who didn't play a bunch last year you ran him a little bit but he didn't play a bunch but you got a bunch of those kind of guys yeah there's there's certain days where you've had five or six freshmen in the lineup you know and that's that's not always really a recipe for success but what you hope that does is gives those guys good experience we get to kind of see how they perform uh it's totally different in scrimmages and hitting in the indoor than it is you know facing division one pitching so um, you know, al along with that comes a little bit of a, you know, learning curve from a mindset standpoint and, and those type of things. So, um, you know, it's been good to see some of our 
more veteran guys that, that have played um, a big role on last year's team kind of start to turn the corner a little bit because I think that was certainly part of our scuffles up, up to this point is some of our veteran guys had, had really gotten off to a slow start offensively too. And it's all contagious. I mean, it, it really is. Baseball's a game like that where um, on the mound, throwing strikes can kind of be contagious. We've seen it defensively where the errors can come in bunches and and uh, offensively. I mean, once you're rolling, you know, if everybody feels invincible. When, when you're not, it feels like it's really tough to get a hit. I've had a hard time <clears throat> kind of compartmentalizing the last week because there was some really thrilling things that happened in this right. homestand and you were five and one in the homestand going into yesterday and yesterday the wheels came off that happens in baseball you have days like that you just need to throw them away but it did kind of take away a little bit of the luster of what you'd built with those walk-off momentum wins yeah it, you know and like you said going up into the end of yesterday's game I mean we're five and one feeling good three walk-offs um you know starting to feel a little bit better about things and and um you know, we didn't get the big hit on Saturday uh, that we had been getting the entire home stand, and and so, um, you know, the the Sunday was just a weird game. I mean, we the schedule has just been crazy with the di the different games. You know, games pushed back the weekend before, which set back our, you know, our starting pitchers that had to go on short rest, and and it was pretty evident yesterday that Dawson didn't have it early. A game where I probably don't let him pitch more than you know an inning and a, and, and change, but we just didn't have the luxury yeah. of going to the bullpen any earlier. And once it got sideways, you know, um, just like you said, one of those days, and certainly not one that we ever want to repeat. We we said this on the broadcast <clears throat> that could have happened to Shea on Saturday, and it didn't. And that shows you and makes you appreciate what Shea brought to the park for you pitching on short rest as good as he was Saturday. Yeah, it, I mean, in two days short rest for these guys is a total, totally different change in their their entire buildup, you know, to get ready to pitch. And so, yeah, what Shea was able to do, I thought his stuff was pretty crisp for, you know, a guy that's that much short rest and, and uh, throws that many breaking balls. Uh, so, I, yeah, hats off to him. I mean, he gave us an unbelievable performance in that, in that spot. Um, or else we would have been in even more dire straits, uh, you know, with our bullpen situation. Coach is with us at 402-413-2400. Children of the Corn in our YouTube chat says, Coach, who has surprised you with improvement in their play so far, and who do you think is about ready to take a big step? Well, I think Griffin Everett would be one. Um, we, we saw that coming, or we had hoped that we had seen that coming um, with his some physical adjustments that he's made at the plate um since last year and just been very consistent this season uh hitting three four and five somewhere in the order for us and um you've seen him go opposite field home run he's pulled some balls down the line he's gone gap to gap he's gotten some big hits for us so i think he's probably the guy that's you know if you want to look to somebody that says hey this is what our hitting approach needs to look like it's griffin everett i mean he he's you know very rarely it's off the baseball i mean he's hitting the line drives the other way and, and using both gaps so um and Ch cam chick i would say you know got off to about as slow a start as you possibly can and and uh he's made some physical adjustments and probably some mental adjustments along the way and you know he cares an awful lot and he, he wants to get it done for the team and you know you look at the last 10 games what i'm looking at with cam is he's taking his walks he's got eight walks to six punch outs in the last 10 games so he's cutting down on the strikeouts um, he hasn't had as much to show for it in terms of the batting average just yet, um, but I'm, I'm seeing barrel contact from him. Um, you know, he lined out, I think, four times this week, twice to the base of the wall in center field, once to short, once to right field. So I think he's starting to turn the corner, and I think as we get into conference play, you'll see him uh, continue to elevate his game. You <clears throat> have bounced him all over the place, second base, left field, center field. It seems like he adapts pretty well to wherever you put him. Yeah, and he's battled, you know, he's had a, a knee that he's, he's you know, had bothered him for the last year and a half, and, and it's uh, no different this year. So he's, um, you know, kind of a little bit of what Joe Acker at, at times yep. dealt with in his career. Uh, but Cam has, has gutted it out for us and, and played, like you said, played a bunch of different spots. And, and I, I just I feel his confidence starting to grow. And, um, you know, we're going to need him. I mean, we need that left-handed bat. Um, we need his speed in the lineup. You know, his on-base percentage is taking his walks because um, he gets around the base as well when he gets on. So um, I feel like it's coming for him. I think when he starts to get going, Max Anderson will kind of feed off that, and, and, and Bryce Matthews is starting to feel pretty good. So then you, you know, feel like you've got four or five that are going well, and then you can just get some guys at the bottom of the order to chip in too. On our text line, Mark in Omaha says, do any of our hitters choke up with two strikes? What is your two-strike philosophy? 
Yeah, um, some do. Some we encourage to do. Um, well, we don't encourage. Some we, we tell to, to, to choke up with two strikes, and, and they do. Um, others we don't necessarily have as much of a two strike um, change physically. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's strikeouts are often a byproduct of a lot of different things. And, um, you know, I, I do feel like this homestand, we've done a better job at times of putting the ball in play. Um, sometimes with that, though, you get weak early contact, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, you know, you just need to you need to have the mindset. You're not afraid to hit with two strikes. And, you know, when you do that, then you get, um, you know, you see a lot more pitches and, and, and wear the pitcher down a little bit. So um, strikeouts, unfortunately, are kind of a more accepted part of the game in baseball nowadays. And that's what kids have grown accustomed to doing when they, they see Major League Baseball. And, um, you know, it's just not um, – the games have changed a little bit. And we, we make an emphasis on it. We practice it. We talk about it. Um, but we, we choke up and, you know, we encourage, you know, deep contact. Launch angles. You hear guys in the, in the big leagues talk about launch angles and that type of thing. Is that part of the vernacular you use with your team? Never. No. Never. It's and it's not not anti launch angle because all launch angle means is hitting the ball in the air, which means line drives are in the air. You know, so I mean that's really what everybody's trying to do is hit line drives. But I don't think you've ever once heard any of us use the term launch angle. You know, it's not really something that you know you can. I guess you you see what your launch angle is on a certain hit, but um, the goal is to hit line drives, and there's a certain angle that comes from from that. Luke Roskam was a guy to me that seemed like he <clears throat> thought a lot about those type of things <laughs> and maybe got in his own way sometimes because he just would lock himself up with all these thoughts. Yeah, I think that that's pretty fair. And, you know, I only love the kid. though. Yeah. <laughs> and he was amazing for us last year. Um, you know, I, I had him at the back end of his career um, and really, honestly, once he just kind of started singularly focusing on his approach and stop worrying about everything else that's when he became a great hitter and and that it's it's sometimes it takes guys longer than others to figure that out and um you know that's we see griffin everett i mean he's he's the model of like what we're teaching from a hitting standpoint he's he's running it off and and having great success with it dorothy lynch home style light and lean dressing endless flavor abilities head coach will bolt with us so it's our first baseball show of the spring 402-413-2400 luke was a catcher for you you've got a freshman catcher in josh karen update me on what you've seen from him in the first 19. yeah i mean you've seen uh you know some really good things there he, he's he's shown a, a strong arm um i thought he i think he's handled dawson mccarvel well um, and, you know, I think he's, his numbers are probably not indicative of the, the amount of barrels that he's found at times um, with not a lot of luck behind it. Um, so I think he's got a, he's got a bright future, um, very physical kid. Um, you know, he can put a charge into the baseball. We hadn't, hadn't seen that yet uh, necessarily, but I think that the hits are coming for him. Um, you know, he's got a bright future behind the plate as well. And, uh, you know, some things that – you know, it's it's tough to find a freshman that can come in and catch right away and handle, you know, some premium arms. And, and Josh has done a really good job of that. This was a much ballyhooed freshman class that you brought on here. And we've seen flashes here and there. And I think that's probably <clears throat> typical of a lot of freshmen. Your thoughts about that group? Yeah, there there's definitely been some flashes. Um, we've seen on the mound, I think, um, C.J. Hood has been pretty, I mean, for coming in in some pressure situations I think he's been very good um, we've seen Jackson Jelkin take the ball here more recently and, and done a nice job and Chandler Benson you know has given mm -hmm. us some good good appearances and and um, you know Garrett Anglum is a redshirt freshman but man he's come out and, and had a really nice start to his career um, and you know we've had quite a few other guys that have Luke Jessen you know got off to a really nice start we've hit him at the top of the order at times and um, you know, it's just it is it's it's difficult to have a lot of freshmen in the lineup. And that's where you need that the veterans guys that have been through it to, to step up and kind of show the way. And, um, you know, we need more than just Griff to kind of set the tone for the offense. Um, and I think like I said, I think it's coming. Bryce is, you know, getting it going. And, and Max, I think once, um, you know, he'll he'll rise to the occasion, I believe, as we start into conference play. And, and so, um, you know, there's a lot of things that that I think we're going to improve on as we continue. The Rask 811 says go dig red before you dig always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. The head coach with us, our first baseball show till the top of the hour. If you want to be a part of it with a call or a text, 402-413-2400. Back with more coming up. So, uh, this date was really fun. Yeah, thanks for dinner. 
for sure. <clears throat> for sure. <laughs> Not really sure why I'm playing with my keys. I, I literally took an Uber here. Oh, me too. <laughs> well, <laughs> can I Wanna drive grab around? A beer? Start the night out right. Because you can't drive drunk if you don't drive there. Decide to ride. This message is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and Uber. Copyright 2022, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in-venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. Hey, folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Dave's. Visit FamousDave's.com. Shop Woodhouse Ford first and experience the difference. The all-new 2022 F-150 is confidently capable and relentlessly tough. Equipped with features that allow you to work smarter and harder so you can get the job done faster. With 12 models to choose from, the F-150 was built to help you make the most of your work week or weekend. Shop, finance, and buy your way online at woodhouseford.com or one of our three convenient Ford locations. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Dave's. Visit FamousDave's.com. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. It's the final days of Ford Truck Month. Your last chance to save big on the only trucks built Ford Tough. Work or play, get after it in a new Ford F-150 or Super Duty truck. Get a Ford Maverick or get after any adventure in a Ford Ranger pickup. Take advantage of our best offers on the full Ford lineup of trucks. But get moving, offers are ending soon. Get to the final days of Ford Truck Month. Maverick has limited availability. See dealer for inventory stock. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list called JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. If your business communication slows down, your business slows down. Kidwell can help. Kidwell streamlines your company's communications with phone systems that work the way you work, in the office or on the road. Kidwell systems provide the unified communications features your users demand, like voicemail to email, instant messaging, and calendar integration. And Kidwell will be there, providing training, service, and support to make sure you get the most out of your investment. Don't let communications problems slow down your business. Visit KidwellInc.com. There's nothing better than the smoky aroma of grilled beef at the ballpark. 
this is Anne Marie with the Nebraska Beef Council reminding you to pick up a package of steaks or burgers for your next tailgate party. Whether you're setting up in the parking lot or cheering from home, nutritious beef is a home run choice when cheering on the Huskers. Visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com for delicious beef recipes, grilling tips, and tailgate inspirations. Beef, it's what's for dinner in Nebraska. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, it's the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. It's our baseball show. Head coach Will Bolt with us until the top of the hour. If you want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400. You can call or fire off a text on our YouTube stream. Crypto King wants to know how is, how's Jake Buns doing? Well, Jake is... Uh he's doing pretty well actually um there's there's not a major update with him but um you know he is he's held off from having surgery at this point um and you know there might be a light at the end of the tunnel here for him to where um if he can start playing catch and start feeling good that you know there is a maybe a possibility maybe maybe there's a a slim chance out there that um you know the original thought of him not being able to come back um, may not be the case so that could be that could be something you know on the horizon and again we'll just kind of see how that plays out here um in the next few weeks um as he you know attempts to to play catch again and and see Um, obviously we're not going to do anything to put him in jeopardy with his health but um you know we could potentially get some good news on him I know you miss his pitching. How much do you miss his fire? Because he's a pretty fiery guy. He usually gets warm by the umpires. He's coming off the mound. <laughs> but you probably miss a little bit of that, don't yeah. you? Yeah. I mean, again, he's an older guy. I mean, he's been through the fire, and he's he's been in a lot of big moments. And, uh, you know, he's doing a good job of bringing it from the dugout as best he can. And, um, you know, so – yeah, I mean, he's just another one of those guys that he bleeds Husker red and he wants to do anything and everything possible in his power to help us. And, um, you know, the thought of him being able to potentially come back when we thought there was no shot um, gives us some hope. Absolutely. I know everybody's focused on yesterday's result, but to me the heartbreaking moment of the weekend was Friday night when Kyle had to come out of the game in the first inning. Yeah, um, very heartbreaking um, in, a, in a lot of ways because Kyle's kind of been our most vocal, um, you know, guy, um, even going into last year when he wasn't pitching. Um, so, yeah, that, that's just, you know, he's going to be a warrior and, and do what he can, you know, to pitch as 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 much as he can. I mean, so to see that, you know, he had to call the trainers and me out there, I knew something was wrong. Um, so not looking real promising for him. Um, and unfortunately, that chain of events kind of led to what you saw Sunday, where we just were just out of bullets, honestly. And, um, you know, so, um, you know, we can hit the reset button this week and get our pitching back in line this week. And um, still feel great about the guys that we've got, you know, outside of basically maybe two games. I mean, we've we've pitched it at a pretty high level and overcome some pretty spotty defense at you times. Back to back games, the Wednesday game with New Mexico State and the Friday game where your starter didn't get out of first inning. That yeah. adds a lot of stress to the other guys. It does. And we, we kinda knew the Wednesday game was gonna be more of a staff day. Um but but yeah, I mean Bragg having to come in and pit throw sixty pitches pretty much cashed him. Yep. Uh, until we could have used him Sunday, um, but I didn't want to use him as the game got out of hand. So, um, yeah, it just it's all encompassing. And, and um, you know, like I said, now that we're kind of hopefully getting back on a more normal schedule, um, we can hit the reset button with some of these arms and kind of get these roles reestablished. 402-413-2400. Let's go to the phones. Let's go up to West Point. Husker, Dan, you're up with the head coach. Good evening, Greg and Coach Bolt. Hey, how are you? Good. Pretty good. We're getting a beautiful rain. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> we need it. Okay. Hey, I just wanted to let you know we are totally – there's a lot of fans that are totally behind you guys. I know it's kind of been a roller coaster deal for you. But, uh, you know, you can coach so much, and the players, they just got to get out there and do their thing. I got two questions. Okay, the first one is, okay, what do players say or act like after a game like Sunday? Well, there's not a whole lot that, that can be said. Um, you know, nobody wants to be part of anything like that. Um, I was certainly um, – I felt bad, you know, for the fans that showed up and, you know, had to watch that. I mean, that that's a – we had an unbelievable crowd on Sunday, great weather. Um, and so, you know, 
it, it's embarrassing, quite honestly, that, you know, the way that that game turned out. So, you know, I think everybody feels that way, um, you know, when, when it turns out so lopsided that way. I mean, I've never – I can say I've in all my years of baseball, I've never been a part of a game like that on the losing end um, ever. So, um, yeah, there's not really a whole lot to be said. I mean, um, that game got sideways in a hurry, and there's really nothing we could do to stop it at that point. Um, so, you know, the guys were obviously – kind of felt the way that the coaches did just you know we put a lot of time effort energy um, guys play hard um, it hasn't always been pretty this year for this group but um, you know we've had the walk-off wins we've had some good comebacks um, guys have stayed in the fight um, so yeah I mean everybody's pretty dejected you know when the game ends the way that it does um, on the scoreboard on Sunday so um, but again new week this week and today was an off day and and um, you know we got to find a way to to make it better and like I said we're going to hit the reset button with with our pitching you know we've got a midweek this week and then conference coming up so we, we can kind of evaluate what we've seen up to this point and try to try to ride with the guys we feel like are going to give us the best chance to win yeah and and you and you kind of answered uh one of my <laughs> questions a little earlier before you took my call about and I was going to say okay so is this actually a rebuilding year prior to being Big Ten champs, and I think you just kind of said that about the pitching and, you know, losing. I hope Kyle Perry's still going to be around, but, you know, Bonds going out for the season, that hurt. And, uh, no, I know, we got a lot of young talent, freshmen, and I just, you know, until the, and like you said, until you find the right players that gel and and, and get this thing together, I there's a lot of season left. I you know that you're going to hear there's always noise out there you know that the season's done but n- nope not not to me and a bunch of my buddies we're we're still on board and we're going to be we're going to come to the park <laughs> yeah so good luck to the rest of the season well i can't thank you enough for that the kind words and the support there i mean that mean that means everything cuz like i said i mean this is our livelihood you know we pour our heart and soul into it um our players do the way they um, you know, the things that they put into it to get ready for a season. And, and um, yeah, I mean, there, there's still a lot of season left. I mean, uh, you know, last year it's a, we played 43 games in the regular season. So at this point we would have been halfway through the season. Uh, it, we're playing a 56-game schedule this year. So we, we've got a lot of baseball um, left to play. And, and I'm – I like consistency. I like um, being able to, to know, you know, what the lineup is, needs to look like and exactly what the, the pitching roles, um, you know, need to, to, to line out to be. And, um, you know, we've done a lot of tinkering, uh, you know, uh, up to this point. And, and um, I, I think we've seen some things um, that, that can lead us to believe that we've, we can settle on um, a pretty consistent lineup moving forward and, um, you know, seeing some guys emerge on the mound that we can count on. Um, you know, we knew going into the season our pitching depth was going to be one of the strengths of the team, and it's been really tested uh, here with our schedule and then uh, obviously with some of these guys going down. Dan, appreciate the phone call. Buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Back to our text line, Jerry from Rockport. Is Kobe Gomez going to have a role pitching-wise going forward? Um, yeah, we need him to. Um, I, I, I hope, anticipate that happening. Um, you know, he had a little bit of a setback. Um, you know, he had a, a foot injury that he was dealing with, and, and um, you know, we're trying to get him back on the mound, um, feeling good, um, you know, on the mound at this point. So um, we need him. We need to get him back out there um, and just and get him in some live game action on the mound um, because really that's that's what he's here to do is help this team. And he can do some different things, you know, play first base and hit and that, that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, he, he had the shoulder surgeries to come back to pitch. and um, Which you didn't have in the fall, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, and he's, you know, even in the, the outing where, you know, he, he didn't get the save, you know, there was a lot of weird stuff that happened that day. And uh, he was still 92, 95 with his velo. And, and uh, so I think we can get him back, get him healthy, uh, feeling good, and, uh, you know, put him back in the fire because he's another guy that's, that's been through it and, and been in some big situations on the mound. He found like three caps of the bats in that ninth yeah. inning that just floated in there for hits for the, for the uh, Mavericks. Dennis on our text line, Coach, after the game Sunday, do you change anything? Pitching, rotation, batting lineup, good luck against Michigan. 
Well, we want to change everything about <laughs> Sunday, but um, uh, yeah, as I was kind of alluding to earlier, um, I, I think you know we're, we're probably going to get um, you know uh, to the point where you feel like you've got twelve or thirteen guys that you can ride with, um, you know, offensively and defensively, um, you know, with occasional pinch hitters here and there that can chip in and and. Um, you know, defensively, we've shuffled some guys around, um, but we, we're going to need to really solidify some things on the infield, um, you know, that way and, and in the outfield, too, um, just to be able to go run some balls down that, that have dropped. Um, so I, I think we've got a, a pretty good idea of what that needs to look like and who can to get it done uh, on both sides of the ball at this level. Um, and so we'll, we'll ride with that. And then on the mound, I mean, we're, we're still kind of shuffling some things around. Shea Shanneman, um, I think his opponent batting average on the season is 170. Um, so he, he's pitched at a really high level. Uh, Cody Frank is one of the ERA leaders in the Big Ten, um, had a nice year. And, again, because of the schedule, he, he's kind of bounced back and forth a little bit. Um, probably see him start this weekend somewhere in there. Um, and, uh, you know, McCarville – it was amazing against New Mexico State, a really good hitting team, and he was soggy on Sunday with his stuff. So I, he's another guy I think that um, we're going to continue to roll out there, and, and um, I think he's he's got the competitiveness, he's got the fire, um, he's got the stuff. You know, when he's back on full rest, um, I think you'll see that from him. And, and you got some freshmen that have that's shown well. So um, you know, we're, we've got a long season left. How have you felt like C.J. Hood has competed for you? Really well. I, I think C.J. has been great. I mean, the fastball's been 92-94. It's a really good breaking ball. Um, he's thrown the ball over the plate maybe even more than expected at times. Um, he's always had the big arm. Command has not always been, um, you know, his strength. But he's not been scared of any moment. And, I, and I'm, I'm not surprised by that. Um, but it, it's, it is kind of nice to see a freshman come in and, and have that type of mentality where – you know, you need a big punch out to get off the field. He's given us that on several occasions. So um, he's a guy we're going to continue to rely on. Folks, we're going to have some fun each week with Coach on, on the uh, his radio show. Thanks to the great, our great friends at the Nebraska Lottery. It is time now for us to play the Nebraska Lottery Husker Baseball Weekly Trivia Contest. Each weekly winner is going to get $100 in scratch tickets from the Nebraska Lottery. Here's how you play. And you only one winner per household per the season. Get ready to text us at our text line, 402-413-2400, with your answer to this week's trivia question. Shea Shanneman tossed a complete game shutout back on March 5th against uh, Northwestern State. Who was the last Husker to accomplish that feat? First one with the right answer, we're going to make you winner courtesy of the Nebraska Lottery. More of the show coming up. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today we're tackling the issue of GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. GMOs may sound scary, but they're actually benefiting our environment and consumers. That's because GMO crops help solve specific problems like insects, food waste, and droughts. By selecting good traits from one plant or organism and adding them to another, farmers are safely using science to produce high-quality foods better than ever before. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's Corn and Soybean Farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. During the summer of 2021, three UNL students helped safeguard cattle across the state. Neely Anderson, Tatiana Jones, and Ashton Commons developed secure beef supply plans that prevent the spread of disease outbreak. The plans protect nearly 850,000 cattle across our state and provide greater economic security for this vital industry. First pitch to Griffin. He hits one hard to right center field. Long run for Brendan Ryan, the center fielder, racing back there, and it is gone. Home run. Griffin Everett hits it into the party porch in right center. This Wednesday, Huskers baseball will square off against the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. First pitch is set for 6.35 p.m. With Huskers Radio Network pregame coverage beginning at 6 p.m. Tune in to your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. 
hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he's so cold. The furnace is out again. But wait, he sees an opening. SOS, SOS, he screams and calls 391-2336. SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer. Boy, he made the right call today as SOS is already on the way. SOS is your trustworthy company since 1950, and with Luxair, you get free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. Call 391-2336 or visit soshvac.com today. In a world where fun and cash prizes collide, one game explodes to the forefront. Cash Blast from the Nebraska Lottery. Non-stop excitement, a winning thrill ride, and starring you. Until April 12th, play 2x2 weekly for a chance to win $5,000 or $500. And if your ticket was a seven-day draw, your prize is double. Don't miss it. Cash Blast, playing at a lottery retailer near you. 2x2 top prize odds, 1 in 105,000. First pitch to Griffin. He hits one hard to right center field. Long run for Brendan Ryan, the center fielder, racing back there, and it is gone. Home run. Griffin Everett hits it into the party porch in right center. This Wednesday, Huskers baseball will square off against the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. First pitch is set for 6.35 p.m. with Huskers Radio Network pregame coverage beginning at 6 p.m. Tune in to your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Hello, I'm Tom Osborne. And I'm Coach Frost. Statistics prove that youth who are mentored and receive support and guidance from a caring adult show measurable improvement in academic achievement, motivation to succeed, and hope. Over the past 30 years, teammates have served more than 43,000 youth. And right now, there are more than 1,000 waiting for a teammate's mentor to visit with them once a week in school. For more information on how you can help the Teammates Mentoring Program, please go to teammates.org and thank you for supporting our youth. Sponsored by Nebraska Crossing Fast Cash App. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres. It's the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Our trivia question brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. Shea Shanneman tossed a complete game shutout against Northwestern State. Who was the last Husker to do it? It was Jake Myers back in 2017 against Western Carolina. Doug in Norfolk is our winner. Congratulations, Doug, and you're going to be getting yourself $100 in Nebraska Lottery scratch tickets again every week during Coach's show. We'll have a trivia question for you. Um, here's a text question for you, Coach. How curious? It just seems like we've had we've struggled with off-speed pitching. Your thoughts? Thanks, Ron. Yeah, that's a fair um, you know assessment. I mean, we yeah, the best way to to hit off-speed pitches is not miss your fastball, right? Yeah. You know, and we've at times not done a great job of that again. Some of it comes from youth and inexperience, um, you know, uh, seeing Division One breaking balls for the first time. And, um, you know, so, again, there, there's a lot of things that, that you can look at and say, you know, we need to be better at offensively. And, and um, you know, it starts with, you know, staying on the ball and, and using the whole field um, and being on time to the fastball, to the, to the big part of the field gives you a, a pretty good opportunity to, to hit breaking balls. And, and like I alluded to earlier, um, you know, Griff, Griffin Everett is, is a guy that has handled pretty good velocity. Last year, maybe at times, good velo could beat him. He's done a pretty good job this year of that. 
Um, and he's, you know, because he's able to, to hit the fastball to right center, um, he's able to stay on the breaking ball a little bit better. And, and so, you know, we need more of that, um, you know, kind of look, look to him uh, to kind of pave the way in terms of the, the approach um, for some of the younger hitters that are, quite frankly, facing Division One pitching for the first time. Jack in York said, Coach, great to have you at Nebraska. Did the Big Ten's policy of no non-conference games last year affect your development of the pitching staff? Also, part two, what, what, is, what is Coach Childress's role with the team? Yeah, um, it, it definitely, it definitely uh, hindered the development of, of the pitching staff from a, the standpoint of you, you had some guys that maybe you would have gotten into some midweek game opportunities that could have had some success in a real game and, and maybe gained some confidence from that. And same thing goes from some of the young hitters. Um, so, yeah, that, that was a hindrance for sure. Um, you know, something that the hand that we were dealt last year with that decision in our league, um, you know, all the, all the coaches in the league knew that that was going to be the case um, when, when that was handed down. So um, that was a bit unfortunate. But um, as far as Rob's, Rob Childress's role, um, he, he's a kind of the, I would call it the mentor role. Um, he, he's there to, to kind of help us with things that he sees from a coaching staff standpoint, have conversations with the players, um, you know, try to help build confidence in guys and, and, and um, you know, steer them in the right direction off the field, um, you know, and just kind of help guide them. I mean, that's something he's been great at throughout his career um, as an assistant coach and as a head coach. And, and that's really in his non-coaching role, you know, with this team, um, you know, he brings a certain level of toughness to our program. Um, he's seen a lot of things and, and mentored a lot of a lot of kids through the years. So um, he, he's, you know, exceptional in that role. And we're very fortunate to have him. We had some replay going on at Haymarket Park. <laughs> That's just non-conference, is that right? Yeah, another. Uh, you know, we were doing that in 2020, uh, and for non-conference games, um, and I guess we only had probably what three or four home games that right. year. Um, so yeah, we we were able to do it for non-conference games. Um, even though we have the capabilities of doing it for conference games, the Big Ten is not allowing. Uh, instant replay for any of the conference games so you won't be able to see that for uh, the league games is that because some places don't really have video production set up at the baseball park is that part yeah of that, it maybe? that's that's why it's yeah. you know um, we're lucky here we do we yeah we're, we have it here and 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 uh at some places don't and i know the coaches would be okay with that that you have it at some places and not the other but uh there's a you know definitely an expense that comes along with it when it comes to having to implement that uh, at certain places and and uh, have people there to staff to run it and that kind of thing so um hopefully that's sooner rather than later because I, th I think we're the only power five conference that doesn't have it yeah you know that's <laughs> it's it's the advancements of the game we've seen some pitch clock by you know warnings so far you've got that running down at haymarket park right now how do you feel about the pitch clock um i'm all for pace of play and guys getting on the mound and and um you know pitching you know working with tempo and those type of things i, I think with runners on base is where it comes becomes a little silly at times where if you step off and fake the throw you get to reset the clock which actually slows the game down more than if you just would are able to take another four seconds to to wait for your sign and take your deep breath and throw your pitch so um you know again i think there's something to be cognizant of certainly to to work fast and not just sit out there forever um it's a you know, with, with nobody on base, let's let's keep it going. Let's keep the pace of play. But um, you know, with runners on base, it, it is more difficult to, you know, to to get that pitch in in 20 seconds. If you you, had, you need to get the signs right, you know, you need to make sure that you are, you know, if you shake off a couple of pitches, your your 20 seconds are going to run down. So um, you know, those type of things, you know, you you don't think of it too much. You get a warning, you move on. Somebody, it might have been CJ or somebody you brought into the game, first batter he's getting ready to face, he got a warning before he even threw the first pitch. He's just trying to get settled on the mound. I can't remember if it was CJ or not. Yeah. That was frustrating to me that, come on, let the kid settle in. He's trying to make his first pitch of the game. Yeah, and, you know, to be fair, I mean, they, they're they aware of that. That's and, true. You know, they've been told and they understand. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, it's just a warning. So just a reminder that don't let it happen again. 402-413-2400, the number if you want to dot us up with a comment, a question, or fire off a text. We're back with our final segment with the coach coming up. It's the final days of Ford Truck Month. Your last chance to save big on the only trucks built Ford Tough. 
work or play, get after it in a new Ford F-150 or Super Duty truck. Get a Ford Maverick or get after any adventure in a Ford Ranger pickup. Take advantage of our best offers on the full Ford lineup of trucks. But get moving. Offers are ending soon. Get to the final days of Ford Truck Month. Maverick has limited availability. See dealer for inventory stock. Okay, let's get a photo of the bride and groom standing next to that giant mud puddle. Good. Now smile. Oh, honey, don't look now, but you're covered in mud. Oh, so is your white tux. You know what this means, don't you? Trucks and bucks from the Nebraska Lottery is back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh. This is the happiest day of my life. Don't you think we should head to the nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer? I do. Trucks and Bucks is back, and you could win one of eight new trucks. Top prize odds one in 336,000. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. See agent Matt Moorhead or Joanne Shamanek in Lincoln or Scott Jeffers in McCook today. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Dave's. Visit FamousDave's.com. At Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family Shop. Woodhouse first, 18 brand, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time, shop finance, and buy online at woodhouse.com. Final segment with the coach, 402-413-2400. The number to dot us up with a comment or question. Got a text for you. Brandon from Omaha. Did freshman guys like Jelkin, Benson, Hawkins this past weekend earn, earn some chances in your eyes to play in some conference games? Yeah, I would say definitely. Um, you know, Jelkin is he's are, always had some of the best stuff on the staff. I mean, he's had to get himself acclimated to, you know, Division One lifestyle in terms of just showing up day in and day out. But the stuff's never been in question. And, and uh, you know, he's very competitive when he gets out there. I mean, you've seen that. So, um, yeah, he's going to get he's going to get his opportunities. Benson. Um, another guy who's been pretty fearless out there. I mean, we put him in some spots, and, uh, you know, he's come out and attacked and, and uh, you know, showed some pretty good stuff for us. And, and Hawkins, his first two career appearances, he comes in with the bases loaded and gets out of both of them. Um, so there's a lot of fearlessness there with, with, with him as well. So, um, yeah, I think it, mentality is everything in this game. I mean, it is literally every part of – uh, being a baseball player is is what kind of mentality you can bring to the park day in and day out and and uh you know the guys that have the best chance to to throw right away um on the mound and and get in the lineup and play defense it's just all comes down to mentality and and those three guys that that were mentioned there in that text message have shown um when they get the ball they're they're going to be ready to pitch rick and omaha on the text line tell coach we appreciate him and his staff so excited for conference play great show tonight Telling him his insight really helps clarify a lot of things. Great job. And I know the folks have been waiting to hear from you. We've been so jammed up with basketball, and Huskers have been traveling so much we haven't had a chance to get you on. So good to have you in here. 
we're going to be here every Monday night to talk to the folks. Yeah, no, really appreciate that. Uh, appreciate the support as always. And uh, so I, I love the Husker fan base. I mean, I know we, we can't, we're not going to please everybody all the time. I understand that. I mean, I'm, I'm we're going to be our, our harshest critics when it comes to, you know, how we play and, um, and compete. So um, I can tell you um, we're, we're doing everything we can, you know, to, to, to get it on the right track. And, and we're going to work as hard as anybody. And, and um, we're going to try to push the right buttons to uh, get off to a great start this week once we uh, get going. Those crowds this weekend were pretty good. Awesome. And I know you use that in recruiting. 100%. I mean, it, it it's amazing. And I'll, I'll say this, Texas A&M Corpus Christi's head coach, I mean, at the plate meeting on Saturday, he comes up, he's like, man, this is awesome. I mean, it, this is amazing. He goes, I've been, you know, he's – He's like, I've been to Texas. I've been to Texas A&M. I've been a lot everywhere, and this might be the best of all, you know, in terms of fan base. And I said, yeah, this place is it's amazing. Until you see it in person, um, you know, it's kind of hard to describe to people. So uh, I'm, I'm always very supportive, uh, appreciative of the support um, of our fans. And we had so many that hung in there for probably longer than I would have <laughs> on that game on Sunday. Um, so, yeah, our fans are awesome. Um we're going to do our best to put the best product out there for them. Even when you played up in Omaha, and that's a beautiful ballpark that, that UNO has, pretty much most of that crowd was wearing Husker red yeah, that day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is second to none, what the support that, that, that we get. Uh, Crypto wants to know if any of your guys are taking advantage of NIL. Um, yeah, you, you, I think so. Um, I, I don't. We have as coaches, we stay out of that completely. Um, we can't be involved in that. And, and I, honestly, I don't have social media, so I don't – um, necessarily, you know, pay attention to a lot of that stuff. But I, I know some of our guys have, um, you know, taken advantage of some of those things and, and uh, some of the opportunities here uh, locally um, with some some businesses. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's amazing. I know I would have liked to have had the chance as a college athlete to, to make a little extra cash and, and um, you know, kind of get some experience with some of those things. So um, I think some guys definitely have. I know some guys um, – I know the you know had the commercial maybe TV for Valentine's yeah the Vals yeah. commercial um, that was pretty pretty cool uh, to see so um, yeah I think it's it's a good thing for for our guys to be able to take advantage of and and uh, make a little extra money. Um, Michigan this week it opens up conference play. That's a program I know you respect. They've obviously made it to the last game of the college baseball season a couple of years ago. We've had some tremendous battles with them over the years. What about the Wolverines coming here? Yeah, I haven't really dove into them a whole lot uh, up to this point because we got the midweek game, you know, coming up before. But Eric Backich is one of the best coaches in the country. I have a lot of respect for his entire coaching staff. They recruit at a high level. They play a, a good brand of baseball. Um, it's become kind of a good rivalry um, with, yep. with us and, and Michigan because we're typically battling it out um, near the top of the standings. So, um, you know, uh, again, take care of business on Wednesday. Um, hit the reset button uh, this week. And, um, you know, get our pitching line back up and, and roll some guys out there uh, in, in the lineup that are feeling confident and uh, get off to a great start. Gary and Columbus, we'll end it with this. Says, Coach, what's, what's going on with the leadoff position? You've been rotating that through a lot and also seems like we fall behind in a lot of counts. Yeah, um, been trying to settle on a leadoff hitter. Obviously tried a bunch of different things and, um, you know, really just trying to have a quality at bat to start the game has been a bit of a struggle um, at times. And, and the, the, the games that we have gotten the leadoff hitter on we've, of the game, we've, we've had some good games. Um, and that it's a little bit of having an a immature team, a young team where – kind of can ride the wave a little bit of, of momentum um so yeah i mean we're just we're trying to find a guy who's going to be ready to go to start the game that is going to have a chance to give us a good at bat and whether that's swinging at the first pitch and finding a barrel and kind of getting everybody feeling confident that way um if it's if it's drawing a walk um just somehow finding a way to to have a quality at bat to give some information to the rest of our hitters um you know we're still kind of searching for that a little bit. So seeing a bunch of different guys, um, kind of maybe have an idea of what we're going to do moving forward based on what we've seen and how the lineup pieces, you know, go together. Um, and just really in general, um, yeah, I mean, we have fallen behind in a lot of counts. Like, like I said, a lot of it is, you know, foul, you go. foul and pitches off. We're so. out of time. Well, went fast. I did. Yep. Good luck this week. Appreciate it. Thank you. There he is. Head coach Will Bull with us every Monday from now to the end of the season. It'll be our baseball show. Have a great night. on the text line text 402-413-2400 with your husker thoughts 
United Healthcare believes small businesses are vital to our economy and an important part of our communities. Join United Healthcare in celebrating small businesses. I'm Rob Broomfield, United Healthcare of Nebraska CEO and a graduate of the University of Nebraska. We want to recognize your small business with the spotlight on small business sweepstakes. Winners receive radio interviews, social media recognition, and more. To enter, visit huskers.com front slash spotlight. United Healthcare, proud partner of Husker Sports. The 2022 Mazda CX-5's inviting interior and eye-catching exterior combine passenger comfort and driving pleasure. Equipped with standard all-wheel drive, the award-winning 2022 Mazda CX-5 creates confidence on your journey. The interior surrounds you with sophistication tailored to you. It's a CUV crafted for together. Shop the 2022 Mazda CX-5 by visiting one of our two convenient Woodhouse Mazda locations or shop online at woodhouse.com. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list called JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. When you're a sports fan, it's kind of like having a new love interest. You want to know all about them. Only, instead of learning about someone's third grade crush, you want to know the latest scores, stats, and lineups. To get that, you need Cox Internet. Cox gives you that window to look deeply into your beloved team's soul. Not to mention their injury list. Cox. We're sports 24-7. 